Now with Windows 10 reaching end of life very soon, there is the option to move over to Linux. Now you may be tempted in thinking that a move to Linux is mainly a technical one. There are technical issues that you need to resolve, technical things that you need to look at to make that move. And there are of course technical aspects we're dealing with technology. So of course there are technical aspects. But I would like to propose in this video that actually the biggest biggest hurdle is your attitude, what mindset you have when you approach the transition from Windows to Linux. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. OK, let's get into this then. Switching to Linux attitudes that make or break your transition. And the point is, it's not just an OS change. It's a mindset shift. And I'll go into what I mean by that now. So operating systems uh, live in an ecosystem. That may not have been true in the past, though probably it was to many extent, but today especially you've got the OS, but then you've got the apps, then you've got the hardware, and then the drivers, and then the app stores, the way that you get hold of the apps, and then games and so on. And just changing the OS uh, doesn't mean that everything else stays the same everything else in the ecosystem has to change as well. So a change in OS means change in the ecosystem. A change in the ecosystem can be hard if you've invested in the current ecosystem that you're in. And that's true, you know, for any kind of uh, part of life, mainly technology and consumer technology. So a move from Windows to, let's say, Mac OS is an ecosystem change. So there are problems associated with that, particularly if you're invested in one ecosystem or another. And a move from iOS to Android or from Android to iOS is also an ecosystem change. It's not just about the change of uh, operating system. There's the hardware, as I said, there's the app stores, there's maybe apps that you've bought and paid for. Now they're not going to work, even if the same apps are available, because now you're changing to a different ecosystem and you can't transfer over the purchase from one to the other and so on. Now, the only way to handle an ecosystem move is to embrace the move. You can't kind of do it by half-heartedly wanting to move and then not really wanting to move and, and then complaining that the move's not really working as you want. You either do it or you don't embrace the move to the new ecosystem. Now, I've got a couple of quotes here from some comments I've had on some recent videos of mine about Linux. Now, this is nothing, uh, any disrespect to the people that wrote them. I haven't put their name to because I don't want to highlight the people, but I want to highlight the kind of problems that people have in shifting ecosystems. And these comments reflect that really well. And I understand why they've written them, but it shows that they're not thinking about the ecosystem change. I've tried various Linux in the past, but find navigating around so difficult, finding files, etc., the language of it a mystery. I would love to find a Linux that is similar to Windows. So what they're saying is, I don't want to change ecosystem. What I want is the same thing. I want Windows, but not by Microsoft. I want Windows by somebody else or I, I want to hark back to Windows XP, or I want Windows 7 supported today. It, it's not that they're, they're not embracing the change. And their comments here might be valid. They, they may have difficulty navigating around and so on. That's not, that's not to say that's not valid, but the point is you can't have something that's Windows, but not Windows. Windows without Microsoft, that doesn't exist. Thank you for the info. I'm seriously interested in moving to Zorin Linux but I'm disturbed to read of the file storing differences between win from Windows. I also like to have a C drive and a D drive, dot, dot, and there's more that the person goes on. So they're coming from the mindset of this is what how Windows does things. There's a C drive, there's a D drive, and that comes way back from, you know, back when, back in the 80s, when there was an A drive and a B drive with a floppy drive, and the C drive was the hard drive, a second hard drive was the D drive, you know, uh, we're talking serious legacy here, 50 years <laughs> of legacy here. And they're saying, I like it that way. Well, you're moving ecosystem. You can't do that. You have to understand how the new system works. Now, number two, don't treat Linux like a Windows clone. There is a temptation to try to find an OS that's really Windows, but at the same time isn't Windows. If such a thing existed, there would be no need to change ecosystem, which is what really the mindset is. I don't want to change, but I, I do want to move away from Windows 11 or I can't run Windows 11. So I want to I want something else, but I, I really want Windows, but not Windows. 
that doesn't exist. You just have to get over the fact that doesn't exist. If you want to leave Windows, then you need to change ecosystem. Don't start from wanting to run your old Windows software. Really, you should be embracing the new system and finding new solutions. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And therefore, you should be open to adopting new workflows and exploring alternatives. Now, here's the key. You should focus on tasks not on software. Now, first of all, there are lots of native Linux versions of popular apps, you know, Chrome, Firefox, VLC, that's the media player, uh, Visual Studio Code, LibreOffer, DaVinci Resolve for video editing, and then programming language, Java, Python, and the list just goes on. There's lots of stuff that you could, if you were running Chrome on Windows, you can run Chrome on Linux. If you were running VS Code on Windows, you can run VS Code on Linux, and so on and so on. It's not a problem. There are lots of these big popular apps work on all systems, and you can get them for the Mac as well. You can get Chrome for the Mac, you can get VS Code for the Mac. I mean, these things, when they are available for anything other than just Windows, they're available for everything, for Mac, Windows, and for, for Linux. Now, if there isn't a Linux port of the software that you're using, don't fixate on that. Think about the task that you want to achieve and then see if there's a way to achieve it using a different approach on Linux, a different application. Linux often offers different tools to achieve the same results, even if the software isn't identical to what you were using uh, on Windows. It's also important to have realistic expectations. Not every piece of hardware or software will work flawlessly out of the box. That's equally true if you move over to Mac OS or if you move over to Linux, same thing. Now, some specialized Windows programs may not have direct Linux equivalents. If you are in a specialist field, I don't know, accountancy, and you spend 90 minutes of your time running certain accountancy packages and they aren't available for anything other than Windows, then you're going to have to stick with Windows. You can't. This isn't Windows, but not Windows. This is a different ecosystem, a different operating system. If you're using online services, or if everything you do uh, is online, whether that is YouTube or social media, or whether you're doing document creation online, or whether you're using any kind of online service, then you're going to be able to do that just as equally uh, on, on Linux. So it really does depend on what you're doing to whether you're going to be able to move over easily or not. Now, if a hardware vendor doesn't support open source software, then it might not come with a driver under Linux. This situation has greatly improved over the last few years, but there will still be some specialist bits of hardware. So if you say, well, I've got this thing that can program my central heating unit and I got it off eBay and it works under Windows, then yeah, you're right, it probably won't work under Linux. And that's and it won't work under Mac OS either, probably the same thing. So yeah, there are going to be things that don't work. You have to uh, understand that. Being realistic about these limitations can help frustration. You do frust see frustration, people boiling up into frustration because they want everything just to work straight away. And then when it doesn't, like, this is rubbish. I've tried Linux, it's rubbish, it doesn't work, it's not what I want. And I understand the frustration, I really do. But one way to avoid such frustration is to have a realistic view of actually what's happening. And the realistic view is you're switching ecosystems. Now, one big area that is a problem for one particular industry, as I said, accountancy might be one, you know, uh, industrial design might be another. Adobe support is a big problem for some people. So you're talking Photoshop and you're talking Premiere Pro and so on. Now, there are alternatives. Like I said, DaVinci Resolve, for example, for video editing. But if you really are invested in Adobe, then it's best to stick on a platform that supports Adobe, Mac or Windows in this case. Number five, it's always important to have a backup of your data. Your data is the most valuable resource that you have. More than the OS, more than the hardware, your data is the most valuable thing that you have. Please make sure you have a separate independent backup of all of your data. And in fact, two backups of your data is the best thing. You're going to be dealing with reinstalling OSs, uh, reformatting hard drives, partitioning hard drives, and you want to make sure you don't lose anything in that process. So please have a good backup of all your data. Now, one fear that people have about Linux is the command line. You don't need to use a command line. Linux, like DOS, which, uh, of course, uh, you know, Windows originally came on top of DOS and then kind of it went away from it. Uh, it's a command line uh, OS. And just like Windows, there is a command prompt or the PowerShell. And also Linux has its own command line. Now, you don't have to use 
the uh, command line, the terminal uh, in Windows or in Linux. You don't have to, but it is there. In general, you don't need to. But if you do, don't fret about it. It's logical and it's well documented. It's not, you know, rubbish. It's not, uh, you know, some kind of weird thing. It's very logical. You just need to understand a bit about it. I've got videos here on this channel explaining 10 commands that you should understand and what they do, for example. Now, most instances of command line use for less technical users will be because in case there is something they need to do, some odd thing they need to do, it'll just be a case of cut and paste these commands and it will fix the problem for you. But that's a rare case nowadays. You can get through, you know, uh, using Linux without getting to the command line very easily. Number seven, it's important to remember that you can run Windows in a virtual machine. That means you don't need to completely sever yourself from all things connected to Windows. Now, if there is a particular task that you need to achieve, a particular piece of software that you need to run that only works under Windows, then you can have Windows in a virtual machine. You can access that even full screen nowadays seamlessly uh, on your Linux desktop. Do that thing in Windows and then go back to Linux for everything else that you need to do. In fact, if you've got enough RAM, you can keep that virtual machine running all the time and just switch to it when you need to. So remember, you don't have to completely cut yourself off. You can run Windows in a virtual machine. And the final thing to remember is that today, lots and lots of things are available online. If there are things you can't find a native Linux app to achieve, then maybe there's an online variant. And the big example of that, of course, is Office. 365, you can view, edit and create Office documents online inside the web browser. And if you then use that in combination with a suite like LibreOffice, which is an Office suite with a spreadsheet and a word processor and a slide uh, program, a presentation program, then you should be able to just about handle any kind of document because you can maybe open it in one, save it in the other, always just use the online one, rarely use, create new documents in. You can work out your own uh, workflow, feel your own way in it. But with services like uh, Office 365, you don't necessarily have to be able to have Windows native versions of Word and Excel running on your machine. Personally, 99 of the documents I create are online nowadays. I rarely use the native uh, apps on Windows or on Linux. Even with the slides for this video were created online. I just don't use them. Even something free like LibreOffice, I very rarely fire it up. I'm just doing it all online. Okay, so that's it. So the mindset you should take when you are transitioning to Linux because you are transitioning ecosystem. Love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, please stick around by subscribing to the channel and please do check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.